Hi you guys, it's Jennifer and welcome back to Busy Being Jen. I'm here today to talk to you about this fake hair that I have been wearing lately and I'd love to tell you more about it. So yeah, my fake hair. So let me um, tell you what I'm going to talk about in this video. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the, the reason why I decided to um, wear fake hair. And then I'm going to tell you about the product that I chose to get to try. And then toward the end of the video, I'm actually going to pull this out so you can see what the length of my regular hair is. And then I'm going to put it back in for you so you can see the process. So if you are just interested in skipping to the part about how to put this thing in, take it out, put it back in kind of a thing, I'm going to put the timestamp right here so you don't have to listen to all this stuff. And, um, and then I have the product linked for you in the space below. Um, you can uh, go straight to that and uh, make the decision for yourself. So anyway, um, just to give you kind of a little brief history, uh, I always had really thick hair. It's fine hair. So, um, so the individual strands were very thin, but I had a lot of it. And I had great hair. You know, I had that in the 70s. I had that fair faucet hair. You know, everybody was trying to get that style and I had it because I had this really great thick hair and it just it just did that style really well. Um, and so anyway, by the time I got to my 40s, I started to notice that my hair was thinning. I was seeing a lot of hair falling out in the shower. I have since realized that it was from a product line that I was using at the time. Um, I never associated the two. I just happened to stop using that product line. Um, and I thought it was the, I thought what changed was the um, anti-hair loss shampoo that I started using afterwards. But I think it was really more the fact that I stopped using that other stuff. And so, um, so I won't go into that. But anyway, so my hair, um, it, after that, it kind of, it stopped falling out as much, but it never really got back to being as thick and full as it had been when I was younger. Um, in my fifties, um, not too long ago, I actually tried a product that regrows hair and that really does work. And, um, and I've gotten some of my hair back. Um, some of the, um, my, some of my length and some of my fullness is coming back, which is really great, but it takes time when, um, and then the, the really big thing though, that happened, and this was before I used that hair regrowth stuff. Um, the thing that happened to me was that I had lost weight. It was a good thing. I had been struggling with my weight for a long time and I finally lost 40 pounds over the course of one year. 40 pounds is not an obnoxious amount of weight to and over the course of a year is not a really short amount of time to lose weight, I didn't think. But apparently a lot of people, when they lose that amount of weight, even if it's over the course of a year, hit a point where they they lose hair. It's a common thing. The, so that was part of it. And then I had the perfect storm here because the next thing that happened was that um, I, I have a slow thyroid. I have a Hashimoto's and um, losing weight threw off my thyroid. And so I was taking too much thyroid medication, which causes your hair to fall out. So my hair got really thin, really thin, like wispy, sun shining through it, kind of thin. That couldn't see my scalp. It wasn't like that. But this part down here, it was just awful. It was, it was so thin. And so I kept having to get it cut, um, you know, shorter and shorter just to get those awful wispy ends cut off. And, um, thankfully was, you know, this other product line that I was using that's helped my hair to grow back. Um, you know, it is coming back. I'm hopeful about that, but, um, yeah, it just, I, I wasn't feeling like myself. And then last summer I was looking at a few months away, um, attending my high school reunion, my 40 year high school reunion. And I just wanted to look like myself when I went, you know, I wasn't trying to look like I was 20. I just wanted to, I wanted my hair to look like my hair looked before all of this. And so I heard about this halo, um, extensions kind of thing. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to get that. And I heard that it makes your head itch. And I thought, well, I'm going to get it early and I'm just going to get used to it. And I'm going to wear this thing at my reunion 
and I'm going to feel like myself again. Um, that's exactly what I did. And I've been wearing this thing ever since. It's an amazingly inexpensive product. When you think about going to get extensions in your hair and you can pay 400 600 I think my sister-in-law spent $700 on some extensions that actually only lasted a few weeks. And um, this these are amazingly cheap. I got mine for $36, but with inflation, yes, uh, the price has gone up. Um, and on Amazon, this I got mine on Amazon. And now on Amazon, um, I think they have different prices for different colors. But for this one, I think the price is 50 so still not very expensive. It's natural. It's human hair. Um, you actually have you actually have to treat it um, like human hair. You wash it periodically. You're you're always supposed to use a conditioner on it. You don't want to use um, a lot of hot uh, styling tools on it. You can use styling tools, but you don't want to use them frequently. It's not going to melt or anything because it's human hair. But um, eventually it'll break down and eventually you have to replace it. It's not going to last forever. It's human hair, just like, you know, our hair falls out and we get more. Um, so all of that to say that that, um, that this has worked out to be a really great thing for me. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to show you this whole thing. And then I'm going to tell you about what your options are with getting the, um, one of these if you want to try it. So you have to have... You can't have a short haircut, like you can't have short pieces on the side and have this work because part of what makes it work is that you've got longer hair that comes over the top and covers this halo part that goes around your head. So, um, yeah, so if you if you're wanting to do that, but you've got your hairs cut short on the side, you're gonna have to grow that out before this would work for you. OK, so let me just I'll show you here. My hair has grown out. This is my own hair. And it goes down to about right here. I'm stretching it. Um, but it was much shorter. And then this right here. See, see, it's kind of stretching because it's kind of elastic sort of on this thing here. That's that's fake. Um, oh, let me just briefly tell you that when I got mine, I took it to my hairstylist. I had her cut it um, because it, I got the shortest one they had. And it was still really long. Like it looked unnatural on me. It was like nobody your age has hair. Like anyway, um, she cut it and, and then I also asked her to dye my hair to match this. I picked something out that was really close to the color of my hair, but it wasn't a perfect match. So she didn't dye the fake hair. She dyed my hair to match this. You probably could dye this. The problem is that it would probably be really hard on it, hard on that hair. Yeah, I'd rather dye my own hair than this. So that's that's what I did. Okay, so there's a little, um, it looks like fishing line that um, you can't see up here. And it goes from here to right here on each side. And that's where the hair part comes in. And I'm going to show that to you. So you see that? So, um, so this is the fake hair and it goes around down here and up to the other side. So when I pull this out, um, here we go. Here um, is, that's the hair piece. And then this is, this is my own hair. Gosh, it really has grown back really well because it was so short. Yeah. So, um, but it is still quite a bit thinner than my hair used to be. And, um, while it is getting longer, my hair was, my hair was as long as what the, what you saw me. And you can see it looks very stripey. They have some that are not stripey. You can get just the solid color. Uh, they have some of them that are curly and I'm not exactly sure how that would work unless they're permed curly because I actually was, um, I was out in the rain one evening or yeah, one evening for several hours. I wasn't in the rain, but it was very humid out. And I wondered what was going to happen with this hair and with my hair because my hair frizzes. My hair was curlier than this. It did frizz up, but this frizzed too. So, um, so then I washed it and then when I dried it, I just hang it on a hanger like that. And um, I, I hang it in the shower. And this is how I store it in the closet too when I'm not wearing it. Um, but when I was letting it dry, I just let it hang dry, didn't blow dry it or anything, and it dried straight. So 
It seems like those curly ones, though, if you washed them, that the curl would come out, but maybe they're permed. I don't know. Anyway, you can get either, um, you can get a variety of colors. You can get them with highlights, without um, curly, straight, and 16 inches is the shortest, shortest. Then I think there's a 24 and something else. So, but seriously, 16 inches comes to like, right? You say it's not 16 inches from the top of your head. It's from where it goes down here. So, you know, it's really long. So there's lots of different options. You'll see right here. Let me hold this up for you. Do you see how there's stitching? Um, that is the part that will itch. And it doesn't feel itchy when you touch it. It doesn't feel terribly rough. But when it's sitting on your head, um, it, it itches just because you're not used to it. But I just told myself, you know, I wanted to get to, I was not planning to wear this long term. I just wanted to go to my high school reunion and feel like myself. So I thought, um, and I also didn't want my head to itch the whole time. So I thought I'm just going to wear this all the time. So anytime I left the house um, for several months, anytime I left the house, I put this in. And a lot of times I would come home and I would take it right out. But then it got to the point where um, I would come home and I would forget to take it out because I was getting used to it. Um, so you just have to kind of just get used to it. Now, I bought this one, has no clips on it, but I bought a second one because I wanted one that was a little bit longer, just a little bit. And that one has clips on the inside. It's kind of got these little comb things that go down in and then it snaps. But I don't, I, you know, my hair is still kind of recovering and I don't know how fragile it is. So I didn't want to clip it in. So I, I will wear it, but I just don't, I just leave the clips alone. I haven't tried to figure out if I can unstitch those clips. I have found that I don't need clips, that this, sometimes I kind of shift it, like it'll shift a little bit and I'll move it. But for the most part, I've never had this thing slip out of my hair or go funky this way. Uh, they all include instructions for how to adjust the um, the circumference of this thing because if this is too big on you, you can make it shorter. There's these little metal clips here and there's a way of doing that. This fortunately for me fits my head and so I haven't had to do that, but you can adjust it. Um, yes. So, okay. So how do you put it in? All right. So what you do, all you need is you need um, some kind of a clip to hold your hair up and, um, and that's pretty much it. So, um, so I put my, I've got bangs, of course, so this is behind my bangs and I put my fingers up here and I just, with my fingernails, I kind of just go around here and I catch my hair and then I grab all of that. Just messy. It doesn't have to be perfect. Let me show you. See how much I left behind there? Not much. Um, cause you really don't need a lot underneath it. Um, probably don't need any. Um, you don't, you want to leave some on the sides though. Um, so anyway, okay, now we take this thing, we put the stitch, the side where there's the heavy stitching, that's the part that goes against your scalp. And you lay this right along the edge of where you parted your hair all the way around. And then make sure that it's even so you can see where it is here. And then see where that is. Okay, and now you let this down, um, and that's almost it. Really, um, you'll be able to see the little fishing line part right here at first, so I kind of brush it forward, and then, and then let it kind of separate and fall. Now we can't see that part here. Um, and then I sort of take my fingers and run around the edge of it to see if there's any more hair that feels like it needs to come over the top. On the sides, I'm feeling like I didn't get it all. Um, you'll just get a sense for how much you need covering up that little um, fishing line. I don't know what else to call it. Um, so anyway, there we go. So now, sometimes I have to check to make sure that my the crown of my head is not separating, but and there you go. Yeah. 
And so it's so funny because I tell people all the time that I wear fake hair. And yet when I'm wearing it, they don't go, oh, wow, that hair, your fake hair looks so great on you. In fact, if I ever mention it, people will always say, oh, yeah, I always forget. I always forget you're wearing fake hair because this looks like I normally have looked. It just, it looks like my hair normally looks. So um, I have absolutely loved um, this whole bit because it has helped my hair to be thicker and longer while I'm waiting for my hair to grow out. Um, or if you just happen to be in a place in your life, because it happens as we get older, there's my hair flying around, um, that we just, that the hair gets thinner, hormones, all of that kind of stuff. And so if you have been frustrated with thinning hair, then this can be really, really helpful. Of course, if you've got balding spots on top of your head, this is not going to help, right? This is really just going to help with fullness in here and length. Um, so if you were looking for something that was fake, that was for baldness, you'd have to look for the kind of wig that you know, covers your scalp, obviously. Um, or I will also link in the, in the space below, um, a couple of videos that I did about a product called Regrows that has been, um, scientifically proven to regrow hair, uh, in men and women. And, um, it, it certainly helped me too. So I will link that in case that is the issue that you're having. All right, so finally, as I mentioned before, I've linked this product in the space below. It's going to take you to Amazon and it will specifically take you to this, this one, like this color, this length. And, but when you're there, just look around because they, they will show, I don't know, like 20 or 30 different color options and texture options. Um, they are different prices and, um, so, so take a look at those and, and the lengths, remember there's three different lengths. So you're going to want to choose either 16 inches, 24 inches and, or tw and 28. I don't know what it is, but this one is 16 and my hairstyle is cut about four inches off of this. Maybe more than that, maybe five. Cause I have another one that's about two or three inches longer and she cut two inches off of that. Yeah. So anyway, um, so you will get to choose, make a few different choices and, um, that I don't know why the prices vary on the different ones, but, um, I think this one has gone up to 50 bucks. I originally got mine for 36, um, but this one has gone up to 50, but it's still, it's a great deal. You guys have had this since last summer, I think probably July. It was July. It was before July because I remember when my hair frizzed up, that was on 4th of July um, or right around that time. Yeah, it was right before 4th of July. So um, I've been wearing this pretty consistently um, ever since last summer and it's still in really great shape. If I'm wearing it almost every day, even for just a few hours, almost every day, I wash it once every two weeks. Um, I put some shampoo on it. It's best if you use a nice, delicate shampoo, um, just like what's best for your hair. Uh, so sulfate, it doesn't say to use sulfate free, but of course that would be really nice and gentle on your hair as well as this. So, um, so I just wash it in the sink and, um, and then rinse it out really well. And then I put some conditioner on it and rub it in there, kind of, you know, manipulate it around so that the conditioner gets into the hair rinse that out really well. I gently kind of um, squeeze off the water, hang it up on the hanger like this and put it in the shower so that it can hang dry and it just drip dries. I don't have to blow dry it. In fact, I think it would be hard to blow dry it because this thing stretches, this fishing line thing stretches. So it'd be hard to, you know, like pull the brush and blow, blow dry it. That would be hard. But when it is dry, then I hang it somewhere in my bathroom and I take a curling iron and I just kind of curl it. I've used a curling wand on it so that it makes more of a chunky, chunky ends on it. And then I've um, also used this, this right now is just a curling iron just to give it a little bit, you know, not a ton of curl. I try not to use high heat on it. Um, and they recommend never using a flat iron. So I have never used a flat iron on this because I want it to last. And then when I am done with it for the day, I take it out and I 
kind of like hold it up to my chest like this and I kind of brush a little bit. I just brush it very gently so that if any of it um, was kind of frizzed or, um, you know, tangled, I get that out, I hang it on here, I stick it in my closet and then it's ready for the next day. But um, anyway, I would love to hear uh, your thoughts about this. Any questions you have, uh, feel free to leave those in the comments below. And like I said, check out the uh, the videos and the info in the description box. But thanks so much for watching, you guys, and I hope I'll see you again on Busy Being Jen.